Hello guys, my name is Eugene Abedu. I'm a Microsoft Certified IT Professional, a Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert, Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer, Microsoft Certified Solutions Expert, and a Cisco Certified Networking Associate. I'm also a Certified Linux Administrator and an IT expert in Hardware Networking Engineering. I also have a level 5 diploma in computing from the National Computer Center at Manchester in United Kingdom and I'm a two times Microsoft certified charter member and also I'm an official partner of Backbone Solutions in Switzerland and an official partner of Secure Rack which is also in Switzerland. I'm also a member of Microsoft Research Panel Group and a member of Microsoft Partner Network. I've also had an experience to work as a Microsoft Certified Systems Engineering Instructor at IPMC College of Technology, an MCITP Instructor, CCNA Instructor, Linux Instructor, and Exchange Server 207 Instructor at IPMC College of Technology. I've also had the privilege to work with Classlink Consult Limited as a training coordinator and right now I'm running my own company that is uh, U Computing Systems. I'm the co-founder and the CEO of the company and today I'm going to have some time to show you how you can capture a Windows operating system using ImageX. Let's talk a bit about the reason why someone would decide to even capture an operating system. Most of the time, some of us have this experience where in a workplace, when you install a new operating system on a new machine, you would have to reinstall required programs on them. Sometimes the programs that we install on the client machines are numerous, about 60 to 50. And any time that you do a new installation, you have to reinstall all these programs that are required by your company. So ImageX and capturing of operating system has come to mitigate this issue. So when you prepare or you install an operating system on a hardware and you install your programs, you can use the ImageX tool that we have in the WinPE media that we created, we created in our previous lesson to capture the operating system that has all your programs and settings. And then what you can do is that you can deploy it to multiple computers that comes from different manufacturers. And then after deploying them, you would have all your programs that you installed on your reference machine and your system settings there. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is to show you how you can do it using image X. Okay. So we are going to use VMware workstation. And I'm going to use a Windows 8 operating system as my reference installation. I'm going to start this virtual machine here. And then prepare it for capturing. This operating system is going to be my reference installation or reference machine. And then we also have some terminologies such as the target machine. The target machine is going to be the computers that we are going to deploy this captured operating system to. Okay, so I'm going to spend some time. I'm going to spend some time installing the programs that we need on this machine and then customize the system settings to suit the environment I'm going to deploy this operating system to. I'm going to install a few programs. I'm going to just install. Adobe Reader and an XML notepad. So I'll minimize my screen here. One thing about VMware is that it's very flexible. So you're able to copy content from your host machine to the virtual machine without any hassle. So I'm going to minimize the screen and then grab a couple of softwares here. I have some softwares that I want to use. I have XML notepad here. I'll copy 
and paste. And get Adobe Reader. I'll copy. And paste. Okay, so these are the two top softwares we are going to use to test this particular uh, setup. Okay, so I'll quickly install these programs first. And before that, I'll just try and bring my icons to the desktop by right clicking on the background select personalized and click on change desktop icons i have I've worked on a couple of computers and i've realized that most of our friends have difficulty in bringing these default desktop icons to their desktop so that is the approach if you know already cool if you don't know now we know okay so i'll close this screen over here this window and then I'll make sure these icons are well arranged. And I'll run my XML notepad. These are just programs that you can install. It's not a mandate that if you are practicing this thing, you have to also install the same programs. You can install any program that you want, any program that you have available. I'll click next here accept the terms of agreement go next go next and install okay i'll click finish here and then install adobe reader i'll open yes we have a user account control pops up i'll select yes here to allow the setup to run okay I'll leave this checkbox on. Select next. I don't usually allow Adobe Reader to download updates automatically because I don't want a situation whereby the Adobe Reader will be using my internet bundle to do things without my consent. So I'll update it manually. So I'll switch this radio button to this side and click install. Okay, the installation has completed. I'll click finish here and close this window okay i don't need these set up anymore so i'll delete them i don't like keeping junk sort by name sort by name okay this looks good so we're taking it as uh, these are the two applications that is required on every computer on the environment we are going to deploy this captured image to and then because we are in ghana i have to also set the system, the time zone to suit the ghanaian time so i'll right click over here i'll click on it on this time that we have in the notification area click on change date and time settings and one thing about this tool is that uh, if you are in the wrong time zone okay like this us and canada and then you don't change the time zone and then you go ahead and say change date and time and you go and change the time over here it's going to work for some time but when your system connects to the internet okay it's going to change the time again back to the wrong time because it uses the internet time to correct Every mistake that anyone would do is setting his system time. So the best thing to do if you have a wrong time is to change the time zone and you get a correct time. Right now in Ghana, it's uh, 10.8. So when we change the time zone over here, we don't have Ghana on this list, but we share the same time zone with Monrovia. So I'll scroll to UTC, Monrovia. I'll select this one and go OK. And as you can see, it's 10 8. This is a correct time. So, when you set a time zone well, when you connect to the internet, the system time is not going to change again. Okay, so I'll click OK here. And we have a correct time zone. Okay, there is something that we need to do before we capture this operating system, and it's by running the sysprep Windows 
2. Okay, it's a 2 that is already in the Windows operating system. To run sysprep, you press window key plus R and you type sysprep. What this tool is going to do is to remove all the unique IDs that can cause conflict between computers that runs on the same network. So if you know that the environment you are going to deploy this image to is connected to a local area network or any form of network, all you need to do is to run this Windows utility that is called SysPrep. And this is going to ensure that all the unique IDs on this particular operating system, like the IP, computer name, and all those kind of things that can cause conflict over a network have been removed. Okay. So I'll right click on SysPrep and run as administrator. And we need to make sure this checkbox has been checked. Okay. To ensure that all the unique IDs have been removed successfully. Okay. We have the OOB and we have the audit mode. Okay. This is the one that you have to use. This one is used for just testing. Okay. So I'll select OOBE and make sure reboot is on and I'll click OK. This one takes some time, but it should be done in a few minutes. So I'll click OK here and the sysprep is running. After the sysprep tool finished running, the system is going to reboot. Okay, system is rebooting. Okay. So after the system reboot, you have to make sure you press escape to bring up the boot menu. And then you make sure you boot from CD. But at this point, you have to make sure your WinP media is connected to your machine. If it's on a physical machine, you have to make sure it's in your CD ROM or your DVD ROM. And then you bring up the boot menu, you select the CD-ROM drive or the DVD drive, and then you proceed. So in VMware, I'll just double click on this CD icon over here, and then select Browse here. And then I'll go and find my WinP media, wherever I kept it. Mine is located over here. I'll select Open, and make sure these two checkboxes are on all the time and I'll click OK here. Once the WinP media is connected to my virtual machine, I can go full screen again, make sure my Kesa is in and press enter to boot from the DVD and press any key to boot. When you select boot from DVD ROM or CD ROM and then the option comes for you to press any key to boot from the WinP media and you don't select it. It's going to skip and then boot into your normal operating system. Okay, so we are in our WinP media, but it's not done booting. When it's done, we're going to start our capturing process. Okay, our WinP media is done booting, so we are going to just test our WinP media here again to see whether it supports image X before we use the image X command line to, to capture this image. So I'll just run image X here and it gives us some feedback which shows that this WinP media supports image X. So we're going to go ahead and capture this operating system by running image X space for slash capture. And one thing that is nice about this image X command line to restart. You can use it to capture the operating system and put it on the same root drive of that operating system. So I can use it to capture the operating system that resides on my drive C and then put the captured operating system on drive C at the same time and it's not going to cause any problem at all. Now let's run our command. I'll type CLS here to clear the screen and type image X but before we run the image X command, let's run this part to see how our volumes and disks have been labeled. Because we need to know the drive letters before we can capture. Otherwise, we'll capture and place it at the wrong place. So I'll run this part here, this part, and press enter. 
this tool is used in partitioning drives and creating volumes. Okay, so I'll run list. I'll run list volume. You can type list bow for short, and you can also type list volume. It's also going to work. So list bow tells us that we have three volumes on this particular PC. And one of them is our DVD ROM, that is drive E. And drive C is now our reserved system space. Okay, that is 350 MB. So that means that this is not what is hosting our this is not the drive that is hosting our operating system. So when we decide to capture drive C, it will be a wrong thing that we are capturing. Right now our drive C's name has changed to drive D. So we're going to capture the drive D which contains our operating system and then put it on drive D. And it's not going to cause any problem. Okay. So I'll press control C here to close control C to close the next part utility. And I'm going to run image X space forward slash capture space D colon. I'm telling it to capture D which contains our operating system and I'll say where should you keep it? You should, you should also keep it on the same D drive. Okay. And we have to give it a name. Okay. The name is what is going to show when we are generating a catalog file out of this particular image. At a point in time, I'm going to talk about catalog files and creating answer files. Okay. This is the name that is going to show up. The description that we give to this image is what is going to show up when we generate our catalog file. Our catalog file is going to be labeled with the description that we give to this particular image. So I'm going to give this image a name. I'll just name it install dot win and then give it a description. I'll bring space quote double quote and I'll give it a name. This is Windows 8 Professional. Windows 8 Pro. And then I'll close this name with a double quote and bring space fast. The fast here is going to ensure the compression that is used when capturing this particular image is a fast compression. Okay. Okay. So this is what this command means. It means that we are using image X to capture an operating system and the operating system resides on drive D and we want to keep the captured image on drive D as install.wim with a description Windows 8 Pro and the compression algorithm or the compression method that we're going to use is the fast compression method. So I'll press enter here. And as you can see, it starts to scan the files and directories on this operating system. And one thing about image X is that it doesn't include personal files of the operating system. So as you can see, it has excluded the hibernation file the page file, which is the virtual memory, and the system volume information, the information in your recycle bin, all these things are not added to the capturing. And then the device drivers of the operating system or the hardware you are running the OS on is not also added to the capturing. And that is why you can deploy the captured image on multiple uh, hardware different hardwares from different manufacturers okay so we're going to wait for the capturing to complete and then we proceed from there okay so the capturing process has started it's going to take some time but once the capturing is done deploying it to the other hardware is really really quick it takes like between five minutes 
to 10 minutes, maximum 15 minutes, depending on the number of programs that you've installed on the operating system to apply. But as for the capturing, it takes some time. It takes some time to capture because it captures and then compresses it at the same time. So you can have a C drive that has about 16 gigs of data in it and then it will compress it up to about let's say four gigabytes the compression is very 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 powerful so it takes some time but once you're done co capturing once you're done capturing when you're applying it to the target machines it goes really really fast faster than the normal windows installation process and the good thing about this is that after the applying to those target target machines are done you have all your programs that you installed with your system settings there so you don't need to reinstall your programs again that is a fun thing about this particular image based installation while the capturing is ongoing i'm just going to enjoy some fruits that i have over here pineapple Mm. Tastes great. Mm. I know you want some, but uh, don't worry, I'll give you your share later. You know what? I'm going to go finish this pineapple and I'm going to come back that we continue. Okay, I'm back. <coughs> My break went well. Okay. It's almost true. All right. The capturing took 27 minutes, 18 seconds to complete. But it's finally done. Okay, so once the capturing is done, the next thing that we need to do is to reboot our machine and go have access to that image that we captured, put in on an external hard drive, a USB flash drive, or a virtual hard disk, and then send it to our red machines for deployment. So we're going to verify whether the captured image has been placed in the location that we indicated that uh, it should go so we're going to reboot this our uh, wimpy media with wp space wp util space reboot wp util space reboot enter it's going to restart our machine and then because we run sysprep on this machine we are going to have the oob experience Again, the out of the box experience of Windows operating systems. Again, because the computer names, the user account, and then all the unique IDs have been removed. So we need to recreate all these things again, give it a new computer name and all that. Okay, so it tells us to accept the license agreement. I'll just check this box and select accept. This has the option to set our themes, our computer name and everything again. So I'll just select this color over here. I really like this color. And then I'll put win8 win8 PC. Okay, that's my PC name. We go next here I'll use the Express settings when you sign in to your Windows 8 with your Microsoft account what is going to happen is that all your contacts in your Microsoft account and then the settings that you kept on your previous uh, Windows device will be synced to this particular operating system I'll just use sign in without a Microsoft account and it's going to allow me to use a local account here 
I'll type win8 and give it a password of p at dollar dollar w zero rd. I'll type it again, then I'll give it a hint password and then proceed. Okay, so the system is done booting. I'll go to the desktop here. You see that I still have my Adobe Reader here, and then the time zone is also maintained. Okay, so I would open my drive C to check whether I have my captured image that I indicated that should go here around. I'll open and I have it here. Beautiful. It's stored at home. So all my operating system, including my applications that I installed with my system settings have been captured into this home file. So I can take this home file to any target machine and then apply it to it. And then I'll have my default applications or the third party applications I installed plus my system settings over there as well okay now the next thing that we are going to do is to have a look at how we can deploy or apply this particular image that we captured to other computers okay so what we need to do is to get this let me bring my icons to the desktop again I've already showed you how to do this thing okay the next thing that we need to do is to get this image that we captured here to an external storage device. Okay, in a real world, you can copy this to a USB flash drive, an external hard drive, or you can even share it at a network location on your local area network and then use ImageX to pull the data from the network location and apply to the various machines or you can copy it to a removable media but because you are using vmware what i'm going to do here is that i'm going to install a new hard drive okay a new virtual hard drive and then we copy this our image to it and then send it to our target machine and do our testing by applying this image to it so what i'm going to do here is to add a virtual hard disk to this machine. I'll leave the full screen mode. I'll double click on this hard drive icon over here. And then I'll go to add, select yes, and select hard drive. I'm adding a new virtual hard drive. I'll go next here, and then I'll leave the default at SCSI and go next here. And I'll say here, create a new virtual disk. And I'll go next here. And I'll give it a size of 80 gig. And then we have this option over here that we need to switch this radio button to this side so that the virtual hard disk that we are creating will be in one unit. Okay. Else it's going to split it into pieces and it's going to be difficult for us to move it to different locations. So I'll switch this radio button here to store the virtual disk as a single file. And then I will not check this box. Once you check this box over here, it would allocate all, all the disk space. This is what this means. It means that when you check this box over here, 80 gigabytes of space will be deducted from your physical machine's hard drive right away. But if you leave this checkbox off, what is going to happen is that as you are adding data to the virtual hard disk, then it will be deducting it from your physical hard drive. I'll go next here. I'll make sure I rename this virtual disk so that I can identify it real quick. I'm going to name it my virtual disk c 
zero and select finish here and then go OK here and you need to take note of where you place this virtual disk so I'm just going to go to my host machine pass through document open virtual machines open I'm using Windows 8 one the first Windows 8 machine on my virtual uh, machine software so I'm going to open here and then I think this is the name of my virtual hard disk so that if I want to locate it again it will be easy for me I have to take note of where I kept the new VHD the new virtual hard disk that I've created so I'll close here and I'll get into my virtual machine we need to partition this hard drive and give it a drive letter so I'm going to right click on my computer and select manage and then you can also launch it from here and it tells us that it has seen a new drive that has been connected to this machine do you want to initialize the disk as MBR or GPT we we'll talk about MBR and GPT uh, partitioning types or partitioning styles later on and you see the difference between MBR and GPT but for now I'll select MBR and go OK to initialize this my new disk and then I'll right click here and select simple volume go next allocate all the space now go next and I'll assign drive letter E go next I just want to name it volume one and perform a quick format so I'll leave this checkbox on I'll leave the default file system which is NTFS and the allocation unit size I'll leave it at the default I'll go next here and select finish okay so I now have a new drive initialized when I go to my computer I have a new drive so this is the virtual hard disk we just added and this is what we are going to use to carry our image to the target machines so I'll double click on C drive and then copy this image that I have here to it and then paste maybe I'm moving too fast I open drive C right click copy my image go back open my new drive and then paste it okay so the copy is complete I'll go back and what I need to do is to disconnect this virtual disk from here and then send it to our target machines in the real world this will mean after connecting your removable drive to your reference machine and copying your image to it you disconnect it and then you send it to the target machines so what I'm going to do here is to disconnect this drive from here I don't need this machine again so I'm going to shut it down using the normal shutdown process and then I'll disconnect this drive from it and send it to our new machine okay so the machine is off what I'm going to do is to disconnect this drive and then send it to the other machine. So I'll just go here, double click and go like remove and go OK. And then press Ctrl Alt. Minimize and I'll go and verify whether my drive my virtual drive is still there I'll double click this guy and it shows my virtual disk is still here and the size is 5 GB which is almost the same size as my image that I captured so it, so it shows that my image is living right within this virtual hard disk here so I don't have any problem so I'm going to connect this virtual disk that I created to my new machine so we are going to create a new machine here 
and it's an opportunity for us to learn how to create virtual machines on VMware. So we're going to create a very brand new machine. You select home and you click on create a virtual machine and you can also go file new virtual machine. Okay. So I'll click here and I'll leave this option at typical. Go next, select our install operating system later. Go next and then I'll switch this radio button. I'll make sure this radio button is at Microsoft and it's at Windows 8. This is a 4-bit version. I'll go next here and then I'll label this one target machine and I'll click on next over here and I'll store virtual disk as a single file and then I'll change this one to 80 GB which should be enough for our installation I'll click next here and I'll click finish and what I need to do is that on this brand new machine when I boot it it will tell me that it doesn't have any operating system okay because it's a very brand new machine so we take it as maybe our company brings a new machine from any manufacturer at all Dell Toshiba or HP that doesn't have an operating system and we are going to apply this image that we've captured on it whether the new machine we are applying this image to has a new has has an operating system or not we can still apply this image to it we can clean the operating system on it and apply our new image to it and if it doesn't also have we can still apply it to it so we're going to see how we can do this i'll just power up this machine to see how the machine will behave without an operating system and then we shut it down and then do what we are supposed to do so i'll power up here and as you can see it's trying to search for a wds server because the system doesn't have any operating system okay as you can see it says no operating system was what found so we need to put an operating system on it i'll press ctrl alt to move out of the virtual machine and then i'll select this one and power it off and then connect my wimp media to it because the wimp media that i'm going to be using to perform this image based installation and i need to make sure my virtual hard disk that i created that has my image on it is also connected to this virtual machine in the real world you need to make sure at this point your wimp media that you've burned to your dvd or your cd is inserted into your dvd rom or your cd rom and then the removable media that also contains your image has been connected to your target machine at this point so i would do that i would double click on this cd and then switch to use iso in vmware and i'll browse go select my wimpy media 64 bit version is here and then i'll make sure i add that virtual hard disk to it i'll just click add here select hard disk go next scasi is okay go next and i'll say use an existing virtual hard disk here okay go next and i'll browse for it okay i'll go to document scroll down to virtual machines scroll down to my windows 8 1 remember we were using windows 8 1 you remember windows 8 1 that was the folder that that was the machine that we created the new virtual hard disk on so that virtual hard disk is residing in windows 8 1's folder so when i browse and i go to document and i scroll down and I go to virtual machine, Windows 8.1, not Windows 8.1, Windows 8.1. You can see the name here and the name here are the same. I'll double click. 
and then wait a minute i'm supposed to add okay so i'll add the virtual hard disk again by clicking on this button here and selecting hard disk i'll go next make sure it's on scasi go next i'll select use an existing virtual disk go next and then browse for it i'll select document start looking for my vhd that i created before i'll open virtual machines i'll open windows 8 one where we created it and here is my virtual disk so i'll double click to select and go finish here okay and i'll select ok over here so the bhd that contains my image is now connected to this machine now i'll power it up and once i power it up i wouldn't need to bring up the boot menu again because this machine doesn't have any operating system so as soon as it detects any bootable media it will boot to it straight away okay but if it's a physical machine and it has an operating system already on the pc you need to bring up the boot menu by pressing escape or f2 f12 on dell and escape on hp compact okay so i'll press power here and it will boot it doesn't mean allow me to press any key to boot from cd because the system doesn't have any os so it gets into it right away okay i'll go full screen here by clicking on this icon and it's about time we start applying our image but because this machine here is a new machine and the hard drive in it doesn't even have a drive letter and it has not been partitioned we need to partition it and if the machine also has an os already you can clean the partitions off and then you create a new partition and then you apply your image to it okay so we are going to do that i'll first test my image x command by doing something like this okay image x is working so the tool that we're going to use to partition our drive is the expert we need to partition the hard drive that is in the machine already give it a drive letter before we start this image based installation okay so i'll run the expert here and type list disk you can see that we have two disks here but they have the same size and it's going to be a problem no we can easily identify which one has data and the one that doesn't have that because this one shows that this one has what some small free space but this one has 80 gigabyte free space out of the total size so this means that this is a drive that hasn't been partitioned and is a drive that the os is using or the system is using it's a first drive and this one is the one that we added to it okay when i list volumes here you see that uh, this one over here is the drive that we connected to this virtual machine but because we haven't partitioned our disk zero that is the hard drive of this virtual machine it doesn't show over here okay so what we're going to do is to partition the zero and give it a drive letter drive letter c has already been taken so we're going to give it drive letter so i'm going to run select disk zero which is this guy over here do not get confused and select the wrong one when you select the wrong one you're going to clean up your image and we don't want that to happen so you select this zero okay so i'll select this zero and then i'll run clean 
to make sure if there are some partitions on it it has been removed and then i'll run create part pry you can type create partition primary info or you can type create part pry in short and it's going to use the entire space on the zero to create a partition for us if you want to specify the amount of space that you want to allocate and leave the rest as unallocated space you can specify create part pry size equals then you put it there in megabyte size equals then you type it in megabyte so if this one gig that you want to create you type 1024 okay then if you want to create 20 gig it has to be 1024 times 20 gig so that you can get the exact size if you just type 20,000, it wouldn't give you 20 gig exactly. So if you want 20 gig exactly, you need to multiply the 1024 by 20 and then you put a figure there. So I'm going to use my entire disk. So I'll just specify a size. I'll just run create part pry, enter. It creates a primary partition for me. And then I'll just format it quick with the NTFS file system. I'll just run format space quick space fs equals ntfs fs equals ntfs to indicate that we want to use the ntfs file system i'll press enter here it will format it quick and then i'll assign a drive letter to it assign letter equals D because C is already taken okay and D is also taken so I'll just say E you don't have to worry about this because when the system restarts the drive letters is going to change and then you have your root directory to be C but for here you have to just give it the drive letter that is just available if you get an error using C then it means C is already taken as you can see over here so I'll assign this drive letter and it shows it has been assigned successfully and I'll mark this drive as an active drive to make it bootable by just typing active and pressing enter and then right now when I list volumes when I list vo you would see that I have a new drive as you can see you remember we labeled our uh, virtual disk the initial one that we created on the other machine volume one okay so this shows that this is the one that is carrying our image and this is the one that exists in this machine that we are about to apply this image to so we're going to apply the image that we have on drive c to drive e okay so now that we know the drive letters and we've marked our internal hard drive as a bootable or an active partition i'll press ctrl c here to create the next part utility and then you have to take note of the drive letters so that you don't make any mistake here so i'm going to use image x to apply the image that we have on drive c to drive e let's look at something over here when i go to c i'll just type c colon enter it sends me into c drive and when i type dir you see that it tells me that the install.wim that i added before is here so we are applying this install.wim from the C drive to the E drive. The E drive doesn't have any data. When I type E colon right now and I type DIR, it tells me you don't have anything there. So that means this is the one that is ready to accept the image here. So what I'm going to do here is to apply the install.wim that we have on the C drive to the e drive that doesn't have any data on it so what i'm going to do is you just press x here colon to send me back into the wimp uh, prompt and then i'll run cls here to clear the screen okay then i know that i'm applying from drive c to drive e so i'll just type image x 
space four slash apply space where are we applying it from from e to c from c to e instead so i'll do just do we are applying from c colon backslash install dot wimp then i'll give space then i'll type one one is the index you remember this index we used it some time ago okay then i'll leave a space here then i'll tell the wimp where i'm applying this image to so i'll just tell it i'm applying it to e colon backslash and i'll press enter here and the applying starts this goes really fast than the normal windows installation process sometimes it takes five minutes sometimes it takes 10 minutes sometimes 15 minutes depending on the size of the operating system and then the number of programs that you've installed the more programs you have on the system the longer it's going to take but we don't have a lot of programs on this particular image the only program that we have is adobe reader so it's taking about 11 minutes process is done and uh, it took 11 minutes 10 seconds to apply an image that is over 5 gig that is really fast and it even works faster when you're using it on a physical hardware okay so there's the last thing that we need to do there's a last thing that we need to do to get this image based installation done we need to copy some bootable files to the root directory of the new image that we have applied to this particular machine so what we're going to run here i'm just going to type that explain i'm going to run bcd boot this command is very important backslash our root directory is e that is where we applied our image to bcd boot e colon backslash windows space for slash s space e colon what this command is going to do is that it's going to copy bootable files from the windows directory of this new image based installation to the root directory which is e to make sure this operating operating system can boot and it's very important on vmware when you skip this option your operating system might boot but on a physical hardware you might have issues if you don't run this command so i'm going to press enter here and it tells us that the boot files were successfully created okay so we have success here when you reboot this awin p media the target machine is now going to boot into the new operating system and then after the boot process is done we're going to have all our programs there just as we had it on our reference machine so i'm going to use wp util space reboot here to reboot this machine and as you can see we have a windows 8 operating system running just like that it looks nice so we're going to wait for the boot process to complete and then we're going to come back to check whether we have all our programs installed and our system time is also the same as how we set it on our reference machine okay so our target machine is done booting i'll click on desktop and as you can see we have our program installed without any intervention and then our system time zone is also at Monrovia. this looks great this is beautiful so that is that for image based installation thank you very much for watching see you next time 
बाय बाय